Hello Matthews, welcome to chapter 9. In this video I will cover 9.1 which is solving linear inequalities in two variables. Before we get into that, let's review what we did last video which is systems of quadratic quadratic equations. So I want you to pause the video since this is a review question, try it on your own and then come back to see the solution. So we're looking at four different systems and we want to classify them as either sometimes having a solution, never having a solution, or always having a solution. So let's begin. So the first one here, I have two quadratics and they have both a vertical translation, one of C, one of D. So implying that they are in fact different vertical translations. So let's say I moved one up uh, five units and another one up one unit. So you can see that these parabolas, one is inside the other. So as the pink parabola gets wider and wider and wider, it will always be on the outside of the green parabola. So since solutions are always the points of intersection, these, this system here will never have a solution. Okay, in my next one, I have ax squared plus c and bx squared plus c. So what that tells me is that the parabolas move up the same amount. So say they move up two units, but they have different vertical stretch. So let's say that I make one of them here like that, but they still have the same vertical translation. So you can see that they meet together at the C point, but beyond that, the pink graph will always be inside the green graph. So this will always have a solution and it will always have one solution. Okay, looking at the next one, x plus a, x plus b. So I have a horizontal translation and it's to the left. So let's say I move this one here six units to the left and I move this one here three units to the left. So I can see that they have one intersection and that's all they will have. As the arms extend, the other arms will not actually ever touch. So this will always have a solution and it will be one solution. In the last one I have vertex form and notice all the parameters are different. So we could have different vertical stretches, we could have different translations horizontally and vertically. So let's see, if I move this one over here and there, and I move this one over here and down for example, um, that might have a solution but it might not. If I had this one here that was vertically stretched, Maybe not that much. <laughs> Let's try that again. Oh, I'm back to normal. I was trying to stretch that so it was like a little skinnier. There we go. Let's try that guy. Okay, so there, and then this one moved over and up. That probably wouldn't have a solution. So it really is hard to tell on this one because all the parameters are different. So I'm going to classify this one as a sometimes. So it depends on the parameters, whether it will have a solution or not. So I'm going to say sometimes. So the answer to this question would be 3, 1, 1, 2. Okay, let's try this one here. Again, it's a review question. I recommend that you pause the video, come back and see the solution. So for this one, we have a system of two quadratic equations and a step in the process of solving it is reaching another quadratic equation. And I want to know the values of A, B, and C. So it's set up nicely with y equals. I could use substitution or elimination. I'm going to use elimination. y take away y is 0. Negative 3x squared take away x squared is negative 4x squared. Negative x take away 2 is negative 3x. And 2 take away 1 is positive 1. So that is a quadratic equation. Since it wasn't specified that A had to be positive, one possible answer would be this, negative 4, negative 3, and 1. However, I always like to have my positive leading coefficient for x, so I'm going to offer another solution, which is where I multiply the entire equation by negative 1, every single part. So negative 1 times 0, negative 1 times negative 4x squared, negative 1 times negative 3x, negative 1 times negative 1, and offer up, in my opinion, a better solution, which would be 4, 3, and negative 1. But either of those solutions would work. Okay, let's look at 9.1. We're going to look at linear inequalities in two variables. So let's talk about what an inequality is, sometimes also called an inequation. It's just a math sentence that doesn't use an equal sign. It uses a less than, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, greater than, 
or even simply not equal to. And it's comparing two amounts on either side of the inequation. So remember with inequalities, however you learnt it, you might have learnt it in elementary as the alligator eats the bigger number. So the larger opening means the larger number is on this side, the smaller opening, the smaller number is on this side, or quite simply how I learnt it, it just points to the smaller number. Either way you do it, we just need to be clear on what the inequality is asking us. So let's just try a question where we're coming up with these ordered pairs and checking to see if they are a solution. So I'm going to check exactly as I would check an equation by substituting it in. So this point here, 1 and 2, if I want to check it, I'm going to substitute my y value and my x value in there using brackets. And then I just use order of operations to work out the rest. So I end up getting that 2 is greater than 1. Since that is a true statement, that means this is a point that is in the solution of that inequality. Let's try another one, this point xy. Substitute y, substitute x. Always use brackets for your substitution. Negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6, and I get 9 greater than 3 plus 6 is 9. Well, 9 is equal to 9, but it's not greater than, so that's not a solution. Let's try our last one, substitute y, substitute x. So I have 1 greater than 3. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 1 is greater than 7. Well, that's not true. So only point A is a solution to that inequality. So let's look at how we find these solutions. These are the steps for graphing linear inequalities. The very first thing you need to do is isolate y in the inequality. Now, remember back in junior high, we looked and learned, when you multiply or divide both sides of an inequality by a negative, you have to switch the sign. I like to avoid that just by always making my leading coefficient positive. I do that for equations, so I will also do it for inequalities. Once I know my inequality, I'm going to find the x and y intercepts of the boundary line. And then I'm going to graph it. So I'm going to graph it with a dotted line if the inequality doesn't have an equal sign, or with a solid line if the inequality has an equal sign. I'm going to shade above the boundary line if the inequality is greater than, and below it if it's less than. Once I'm done that, I'm going to pick a point in the area of solution. Now, because there is an area of solution, there are infinite points I could choose, infinite solutions. Just choose one of them and then plug it into the original inequality to see if you're right. So let's try one together. In this one here, I want to isolate y first. So I'm going to, since 4y is positive, I'll leave it there. I'll subtract 3x from both sides. In doing so, I get 4y greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 12. I want to get y by itself, so I will divide everything in the inequality by 4. And I get my inequality as y greater than or equal to negative 3 quarters x plus 3. So let's look at how we can solve this. First step I'm going to do is plot the boundary line. So I'm going to look at the y-intercept, which is just 3. And then I'm going to look at my slope, negative 3 quarters, to come up with another point. So negative 3 quarters means I go down 3 and write 4, and I get a point. So I'm going to connect those dots. It will be a solid line since our inequality included solutions on the point, on the line. Now since I was looking at greater than or equal to, I am going to trace along my boundary line and always shade above since it's greater than. So I'm always above my boundary line. So I show that by shading above. So now that I have my graph, solid line, shaded above, all I have to do is check. So you can pick any point at all in the area of solution and check it in the original inequality before you isolate it for y. So you can see substituting in x and y for 5, I get 35 is greater than or equal to 12, which I know is correct, so I know I did this correctly. So I want you guys to pause the video, try this one on your own, and come back to see the solution. So in this one here, I need to isolate y, but it's negative here, so I don't want it there. I'm going to add 5 to both sides. So I get the inequality 2x greater than 5y minus 10. Let's get rid of this negative 10 by adding 10 to both sides. So I get 
2x plus 10 greater than 5y, or if you prefer to see your variable on the other side, you can write it as 5y less than 2x plus 10. You can see with respect to the y, it's the same, 5y less than or 5y less than. So to finish this off, I just have to divide everything by 5, and here is my inequality, y less than 2 fifths x plus 2. So let's graph that. So first thing I'm going to do is graph my boundary line. Start with your y-intercept at 2. Plot that. Then go to your slope of 2 fifths. So I'm going to go up 2, right 5 to get another point. Then I'm going to connect the dots. But my original inequality didn't have an equal sign under it, so I'm going to use a dotted line. Now it said y is less than so trace along your boundary line and you're always going to shade below less than is below so shading below once you've done that you just have to pick a point in the area of solution i like these ones because i can pick the origin zero zero that's my favorite point to pick because it's super easy to do the check because x and y are both zero so you can see put it all into the equation Everything cancels out, and I'm left with 0 greater than negative 10, which is true, so I know I did it correctly. Now, all of these wonderful graphs can be done on the graphing calculator. Notice here, these are all the different possibilities. So I have a boundary line, a boundary line where I'm shading above, so it's greater than, a boundary line where I'm shading below, so it's less than. I can also have a negative sloping line. And here, greater than, along that line, I'm always shading above. Or less than, along this boundary line, I'm always shading below. Now, because this is shading, you'll notice on the other side of the y equals, this is normally what y equals look like, and we have just this symbol here for a line. That's normally what we graph. But if we actually go to the left of y equals, you can have an upper triangle, which means you're shading above or a lower triangle which means you're shading below to do that you just go to the left of your y equals and press enter to toggle through all the different symbols so let's look at how we come up with the inequality from the graph so we're going to reverse this process the first step is we need to come up with the equation of the boundary line and I can see that this boundary line is a linear equation. So it has the form y equals mx plus b. So let's identify the y-intercept right here at 3. And let's count what the slope is to go from point to point. So you can see I've gone down 3, right 1, which means that my slope is negative 3 because I'm going down. Now look along your boundary line. It's a solid line, so it's equal to, and I'm always above that boundary line, which means my inequality will be greater than or equal to negative 3x plus 3. Okay, I want you guys to pause the video and give this one a try. So for this one here, I see that the boundary line is linear, so I know it's y equals mx plus b. Let's start with the y-intercept at negative 8 and then use our slope to count the slope to go rise over run to get to our next point. Rise eight, run two, eight over two is four. So four X minus eight. Now we just have to write the inequality. So see along here, it's a dotted line, so I know it's not equal to, but along that line, I'm always shading below. So dotted line and below, my inequality is Y less than four X minus eight. So I thought I hit the gold mine when I saw this cartoon. I'm going to make it a little bigger so you can see it. So Paige is on the phone with Geeky Morton, and he's texting her. He's saying, hey, I need help with a math problem. And lo and behold, it's an inequality. So he says, how do you simplify 2i less than 6u? And she says, well, I know. You divide both sides by 2, and you get i less than 6u. So she texts him back, i less than 3u, to which he responds, I love you also. 
Hope you guys appreciated that joke as much as I did. You guys can move on to practice questions one to five, detailed solutions on D2L, then move on to your textbook questions as needed. So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Fun.